Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start the question two, that's number 23, question paper 5-1. And I'm going to explain the question two in this paper. And I hope this is going to be of help for you all in the coming exams. Question two, trypsin is a protease enzyme. A student compared the activity of trypsin from two different species of Atlantic salmon, this one, SS, and the domestic pig, SSD. I'm not taking the whole name. I make it easier for myself. I find it very confusing to say the names and then. So figure 2.1 shows an Atlantic salmon and figure 2.2 shows the domestic pig. So they both, you can see, you can see them in the pictures and you get a rough idea what we're talking about. Then it says Atlantic salmon are fish and are ectothermic, which means that the internal body temperature fluctuates with the surrounding environmental temperature. Just like, you know, lizards disappear in the winters and then reappear in the summers. The water temperature in the habitat of Atlantic salmon can decrease up to minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. Domestic pigs are mammals and maintain an internal body temperature of approximately 38 degrees Celsius. So now all this information I remember I told you in the video one, everybody must go to video one, that you must read this, you must comprehend it, you must underline it, and you must read the whole question before you start attempting it. Then the student provided a trypsin from Atlantic salmon, trypsin from domestic pig. So trypsin from the two different uh, animals and cubes of gelatin. Gelatin is made from the protein collagen. The student measured the time taken for the trypsin from each animal species to break down the gelatin cubes at 20 degrees Celsius. So what did the student measure? The time taken to break down the gelatin. Now this will always be the dependent variable. What the student is measuring? The student measured. So this would be the dependent variable. The student used 10 centimeter cube of 5% trypsin from each animal species, placed each trypsin in a separate test tube maintained at 20 degrees Celsius in a water bath, placed a gelatin cube in each test tube of the trypsin solution. So we had a beaker, we had the trypsin in it, and we placed a gelatin cube in it. We placed a gelatin cube in each test tube and we recorded the time taken to break down the gelatin cube. So it broke down into tiny pieces which were then probably just suspended in it. Break down the gelatin cube in each test tube. The student repeated this 12 times for each type of trypsin to identify the dependent independent and the dependent variable. Independent variable is the type of trypsin. What did we take? We took two types of trypsin. So this will be the independent variable, I, independent. What did I take? And the dependent variable is the time taken. Time taken to break down gelatin. Then it says the student standardized the temperature of the water bath, the volume of the trypsin solution, and the concentration of the trypsin solution. State one other variable that the student should standardize. Now you know that whenever we're talking of enzymes, we talk of pH of the solution because enzymes are affected by the temperature and pH. So they've standardized one thing, so then you could have talked to the pH of the solution. Or you could have said the surface area of uh, the cube or the mass of the cube or the volume of the cube. Also, you could talk about the concentration of the gelatin or the collagen in the cube. So pH of the solution, surface area of the cube, and the concentration of the gelatin. Now, if you are thinking of this, you know, when you're thinking of it, how did they make the cube? How much of the gelatin did they take? I mean, if you ever made jelly, you know, there's got gelatin in it. So how much of the powdered part do you put in uh, two cups of water, boiled water? So everybody needed to be thinking on those terms. Uh, the results of the experiment are shown in table uh, 2.1. Then it says there's a mean standard deviation. Use the table 2.1 to calculate the mean time taken for trypsin from domestic pigs to break down the gelatin. So here we've got to fill this place up. Now this was of course the mean is 131.1. So what did you have to do is you had to add all these and divided by 12. 
and you divide it by 12 and you got 131.1. Then it says the volume for calculating the standard deviation, sorry, the formula for calculating the standard deviation is this. I told you the formula would always be given to you. The student calculated the sigma x minus x bar whole square as 110.92. Using this calculated value in the data in table 2.1 to complete the calculation of the standard deviation for domestic pigs. So n minus 1 would be what? You would divide it by 12 minus 1, 11, and you would get the figure of x, which is 3.2. Yeah, but of course, 110.92 you, which is the sigma, you divide by n minus 1, but then there's the under root also. You have to do this as well, so don't forget that. And coming to part three, the student used a t-test to analyze the data. The null hypothesis of the t-test was there is no difference between the time taken for trypsin from Atlantic salmon and trypsin from domestic pig to break down a gelatin cube at 820 degrees Celsius. Sometimes they ask you for the null hypothesis. Sometimes they give you the null hypothesis. The calculated value was 2.663. The student compared 2.63 to the values in table 2.2. Now, degrees of freedom. Now, how would we calculate the degrees of freedom in this situation? What was the number of observations? So, whenever we are doing this null hypothesis story, the degrees of freedom in a t-test, t means requiring two means. So, we have 12 readings there, 12, so minus 1 from each, and then you get 11. So, 22 is the degree of freedom. And the answer is 2.074. Now, what is 2.074? That's the critical value. So critical value at 22 degrees of freedom and at probability of 0 0.05 is 2.074. Now, your calculated value of 2.663 is greater than the critical value. Even if you just wrote that, you got a mark for that. So critical value 2.074 got one mark. Second mark, your T value is greater than the critical value, got another mark. And when it is greater, what happens? Null hypothesis is rejected, which means there is a significant difference at probability 0 0.05. These are the wordings I want you to use. I want you to memorize this, and I want you to understand it as well. I'm not saying just memorize it, but understand it as well. Using table 2.1 and table 2.2 and the calculated value of this state and explain what the student can conclude about the results. So wording at critical value 22 is 2.074, t value 2.663 is greater than 2.074, null hypothesis is rejected, there is a significant error difference at probability 0 0.05. Then the last part of the question is suggest explanation for the difference between the activity of the enzyme trypsin in Atlantic salmon and the activity of trypsin in domestic pigs. Now this is a suggest, suggest is always difficult. We could have said something which was given in the question. Salmon trypsin is adapted to colder temperatures. Salmon, uh, salmon trypsin forms enzyme substrate complexes at a faster rate than the pig trypsin. So something very basic, something which is given in the question, you could easily have given me that. Any other valid point was also accepted. So you could have come up with anything. So salmon trypsin adapted to colder temperatures at 20 degrees salmon trypsin forms enzyme substrate complexes. I've given the abbreviation for it, may or may not be accepted, so please write the whole sentence at a faster rate than pig trypsin. That was for 10 marks, and that completes this paper 5. And I hope this is helpful, and I hope you all can do very well in the paper 5 coming up soon.